Hi everyone, my name is Manuel Rueña from Independent Physics and in this video I will briefly explain my published paper Dark Energy from Cosmological Energy Conservation published in 2023 in Advances in Astronomy and available for free in the description. In this paper I show a possible way to predict the gravitational wave energy density which will hopefully be measured in the next decades through gravitational wave detectors such as LISA, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna under the assumption that energy lost due to cosmic redshift is fully responsible for the energy gained by a dark energy field which drives the accelerated expansion of the universe. The observed redshift of type 1a supernova is interpreted as a cosmological redshift from the expanding universe and thanks to them we know since 1998 that the expansion is accelerating. The simplest solution to explain the accelerated expansion is to hypothesize a constant energy field exerting negative pressure, which is referred to as a dark energy in the lambda CDM model. Recent results suggest that the energy of this field is not constant along the universe. The expansion of the universe not only dilutes radiation and matter energy densities, but also for the case of radiation, such as photons, relativistic neutrinos, or gravitational waves, their energy is lost through redshift due to the fact that uh, it is inversely proportional to their wavelength. Astrophysical sources of photon energy density such as stars and dust emission can be neglected against the photon CMB energy density because their number and energy are estimated to be at least two and one order of magnitude smaller respectively. Neutrinos became non-relativistic at the start of the matter-dominated era so the redshift can be neglected against the one from the CMB. Gravitational waves also redshift and lose energy with expansion, proportional to the inverse of the scale factor, but their energy density is unknown. Its main constraint comes from indirect limits such as the Big Bang nuclear synthesis and recombination. Its origin can be cosmological, possibly quantum fluctuations, inflation, phase transitions in the early universe, alternative cosmologies and cosmic strings, and astrophysical, like compact binary coalescence, supernova burst, and rotating pulsars, etc. They are barely absorbed or not reflected to any significant degree, so the dissipation of their energy takes place predominantly in redshift. The vacuum energy or cosmological constant of dark energy does not dilute with expansion of the universe. Thus, total cosmological constant energy, not density, increases proportionally to the third power of the scale factor as the universe expands. This loss and gain of energy are allowed to take place since global energy conservation cannot be defined in general relativity, because there is no time translation invariance in the expansion of the universe. But what if the universe does conserve energy and it is an additional requirement to be imposed in general relativity? This will be analogous to the energy conditions we impose in general relativity to forbid the existence of negative masses or negative energies, for instance. For some rough estimations, the energy lost in CMB redshift per unit of volume is just an order of magnitude smaller than the energy gained by the cosmological constant, the energy density or dark energy, per unit of volume since recombination epoch. This is calculated in the paper. Based on constraints on energy density of the stochastic gravitational wave background at the early universe, we find that most of the energy of the stochastic gravitational wave background must have been produced along the universe timeline. This is due to the fact that while dark energy grows with the third power of the scale factor, energy lost by redshift grows with the first power of the scale factor. Both can only be equaled if most of the gravitational wave energy density is produced along the universe's age for instance by astrophysical sources. But the rate of gravitational wave energy originated from astrophysical sources throughout the scale factor can also be estimated. A small side note here, because I forgot to present this slide, is how to do it. Ok, so remember we are trying to equate the energy loss due to redshift to the energy gained by the cosmological constant field. So we have energy conservation. So the energy that has been gained by the cosmological constant along the universe scale factor by unit of volume space must be estimated first. This must be the energy lost due to stochastic gravitational background plus the CMB redshift along the scale factor. Then the energy density of the stochastic gravitational wave background so that is redshifted energy lost is equal to the gain cosmological constant energy at any given scale factor can be obtained 
accounting for its dilution. Finally, the values of the energy density of the gravitational waves along the scale factor and its nowadays values can be derived. All this can be done by simply modifying the Friedman equations and implementing this energy conservation. In the paper, this has not been done, so if you are willing to do it and put the effort, please let me know about your results. And as final remarks, how should the energy field look like? Well, it must be a scalar quantum field which exchanges energy with both electromagnetic and gravitational field, which is natural since the electromagnetic field is a source of energy and thus a source of gravity in general relativity. If the exchange of energy is local, regions with greater amount of energy would imply greater pass gravitational waves. It could also resolve the Hubble tension and the estimated energy of the universe would change. A different fate for the universe instead of the big freeze would occur depending on this field. Massive particles should not contribute significantly to the energy lost as dimensionally altered by the expansion because their interactions reset the difference in distances, although they are certainly affected in some way. Also, virtual massless particles should not in principle be affected either. If these values are significant enough, the estimated gravitational wave energy density would be smaller. The same would happen for other unknown contributions such as particles decaying into vacuum energy. Finally, cosmic inflation could also be described by the same transition of energy for the inflaton field. Thank you very much and see you on another video here in Independent Physics.